Happy, Happy Podiversary! Hi, this is Belinda with Belinda's Bobbles, and welcome to day one of 2024's North Texas Yarn Crawl. I have Whitney and Sam with me again this year. You guys would have met last year. Wave, thank you very much <laughs> for participating here. <laughs> Okay, so I have to have at least a couple of generations going this year for me, okay? You know, come on, let's bring those younger generations in here. I have seen, I have seen mostly what um, what my age group is, but that's okay. I love you all. Um, today we are starting out in Waxahachie at Uta Yarn. Making sure I say that right, yeah, Uta Yarn, which is about an hour's drive. So we're going to stop somewhere new along the way instead of my normal starbucks start we are going to cosmics it's a brand new mcdonald's thing i haven't tried it yet and we're only the third one in the country that they have built so this will be a little something new then we're heading off into the fort worth um, area and see how many shops we can see today by the way today is is it the 21st I'm not sure. Yep, okay. Okay. It is April 21st. I'm with it today. You know me. <laughs> 2024. And we are going to have a blast on our crawl. So come on and join us. I will have links all down below on the places we're going. And on Uta Yarn, this is a mother-daughter team, uh, Trudy and Lee. And Trudy is an amazing, amazing um, knit designer. So I will have links for her designs as well in the um, comments down below. So come on, guys. Let's go crawl. Hopefully third time's the charm. Let's get moving. Here we are at Cosmics. McDonald's has gone back and um, used a 1990s character and Of course the girls weren't joining in but oh well I had fun <laughs> actually they were having fun too all right then we drove about 45 minutes down to Waxahachie and I drove around the square a few times because I didn't realize you to yarn had moved they are right on the square in their own building they've got all this beautiful glass front on the front and the back let's take a look Isn't this just gorgeous? They used to be in a shop where they shared with um, another lady. There's Trudy in the background. And um, it was a like an antique mall area. And so this is just so nice. Whitney comes back to those pom-poms multiple times, I can tell you. <laughs> but Trudy and Lee started out going, running the circuit and taking their um, hand-dyed yarns everywhere. And got my first stamp on my passport there. And then they ended up opening up their own um, brick and mortar. Aren't these needles beautiful? I know I don't need another set, but oh, they're so pretty. So a lot of the yarns, I mean, a lot of the yarns in here are actually their own um, hand dyed. Now take a look at all those blacks there, that nightshade, I think is it's something called something like that and such beautiful shades of black unfortunately for me it's a woolly wool and I'm allergic to it but oh I still sit there and love to look at it you do find a lot of natural fibers in here and botanically dyed yarns.
Now all of these here, the different colors, those are actually minis that they have put together and they go along with a lot of Trudy's designs. I'll put a link down below or at least a way for you to find her. You can search her up on Ravelry. Uh, she has some beautiful shawl designs. These are these shawls here are actually her designs. And look at the ceiling in this building. It's just so bright, airy, that um, open brick and everything. But today is also, or Sunday, it's been a couple of days because my internet has been messing up. Um, it's also my first pot anniversary with Belinda's Bobbles. So if you put a comment down below on this video, then you'll be entered in to win a um, prize for the per first pot anniversary. I've grabbed a little bit of yarn and some other goodies to put into the package. And that Surrey, beautiful. Those again are some of these yarns. There, she puts together either full skeins or minis, depending on the project. And these again are botanically dyed yarns. I'm not sure about. That. I wonder if that black is. I need to look at that. She may have some that are acid dyes. I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking most of them are uh, plant dyed. Such beautiful soft colors. And that's the stole that show. I mean, just such delicate colors here. She had some kits that if you bought the kit, you got the um, pattern there that went with it for free. I tried doing this last night. Internet just did not work. I love the detail on the back of this. Sorry, but Proby was crying because he wanted me over there with him. He didn't want me in the kitchen where I was recording. And then nothing lined up so that whatever I was saying didn't line up with what I was looking at. Like I told you, Whitney ended up back over here with the pom-poms. Those are clay or ceramic buttons. They're stamped. They're just beautiful. And these big buttons, I figured this would be great for a shawl or a cardigan. And I did end up getting one of those. Of course, the dogs wake up as soon as I get to talking and everything. So if you hear nails on floor, that's what's in the background. Steve is up and moving around. Our 17-year-old Chihuahua. And these are cow horn buttons. They're actually made from cow horns. Don't you just want to just reach your hand in and play with all of those? This was their yarn crawl colorway, the disco um, crawl. And it's just that beautiful in person. Okay, so we're waving goodbye to Waxahachie and we are heading up to Fort Worth. So about, it was about 30, 35 minutes back to get back to town um, to where Juju Knits is. So we are heading towards downtown right now. And there is the skyline in the background. Julie started out with um, doing her yarn shop actually in a trailer. Pearl was her name. <laughs> before she got her brick and mortar. And then she opened up her brick and mortar, I think um, in 2019, and then COVID hit um, pretty much before she had her first anniversary, I believe. Or She's letting me know that there's somebody in the shop that I wasn't expecting to run into right at that time. But she just has so many things 
you it's like going in and delving in look at all the pom-poms again uh, and just so fun to see what you can find from room to room and here is a sighting this is my brother Bill it's his first time to crawl and he is showing us yeah he is showing us the cardigan that I showed on the um, one of the previous episodes and we'll talk about that on the next episode I've got some more video of it and everything it's a zipper cardigan that he did okay this pink here is hey dolly and then Arkansas Yarn Company, I missed her. She was there the previous two days, but she dyed a um, colorway just for Juju's and for the yarn crawl. But that Hey Dolly, if you're ever around um, Julie for any length of time, you will know that she is a huge Dolly fan. And so they have put together a... Um, between Madeline Tosh they dyed a colorway specifically for the yarn crawl the hay dolly and it goes along with a shawl pattern and this is a Madeline Tosh library they've put inside there's items in here that people have donated to it you can take something out if you're needing it or put something in if you don't I'm telling you it's a dolly type of world over here. That white just sparkles. It's called wedding cake. Julie has put together quite a community and she really, a lot of these items um, that she had over there that we just looked at were fair trade. The yarn there is actually what um, that what Bill used on his cardigan. And look at the scapies. I think I'm saying it right. I'm not sure, but those little mini scapies are so cute. And there's some full size ones beside it. You can find so many different things for every price point in the shop. And I love all these striped yarns that she's um, brought in. We've got the Regia cotton um, summer socks. And then you got unicorn tails from Madeline Tosh. All of their minis. Madeline Tosh is actually located just a couple of miles away, and I did a video last year going to one of their open days, if you want to look back at that. Then Fox Vane Fibers had a trunk show. This was actually my first time getting to meet her in person. We had talked online before, um, years ago, through a um, another dyer that was doing live dyes. And look at all these gorgeous colors. She had stopped dying for a little bit, and I'm so glad she started back up. I'm just letting you take in all this beautiful fiber and yarn. I got to take one of those minis home with me, even, um, after I made a purchase. And those are little stitch markers in that cup, including 3D printed foxes. Okay, well now we're on to West 7th Wool. Just about a 5-10 minute ride down the road. Amy and Hunter opened this shop up in 2016. And they just expanded last year. If you go back to last year's video, um, Hunter gave us a tour of their brand new dye studio. They have been dyeing yarns for a little bit, and they've just picked it up. They have that wonderful open concept in there. And this was their 
yarn crawl color. Kind of reminds you of the stockyards. Hi, Riz. And that's the morning sunshine cow that they had there. Okay, so they have, at least they used to. I'm not sure if they still do. I should have looked better. But they would um, have everything according to um, fibers and weights in different areas. And you can, isn't that gorgeous? Amy is such an amazing knitter. I love following her on Instagram and seeing what she's making. All these kids sweaters and this is the cutest thing look at this the booties and hat Aww, itty bitty bear cubs and I just breezed past those cards those color work cards I've been wanting some and I didn't even notice that they were there until after I was watching the video back They've got some kits there for starting up and everything. All I had to do was tell the girls that I was coming over and they vacated. Okay, so this wall here is specifically for all of Hunter and Amy's shop yarns. And that butterfly sweater, if you back up and look at it, that's crocheted. Okay, let's head on over to Bedford about a 25 minute drive and we're going to Lone Star Yarn. This shop was actually opened up in the middle of COVID. You didn't see many businesses opening in COVID but this one did and she's still going and it's a nice area to have it in. Um, she's right off the highway just a couple of, about a mile or so so it's easy to get to. And I found in here some Malabrigos and also um, Louisiana Yarn Guys, which they had a trunk show there last year. And just so many different things. That's one of the amazing things is you end up seeing different things in different shops. She had a little tag on these bags. Um, if I can't, if I can't take my knitting, I'm not going. <laughs> Hi, thanks for welcoming us. Um, that cardigan was a different take on some of the crocheted granny squares because it didn't have all the different colors, and it, I thought it was beautiful some cat size. It's amazing what I see when I go back that I missed when I was recording. Makes me curious to find out what that is. Over behind her wall here with all of the um, needles was a um, table for her classes. Then you're coming over here that is hand dyed acrylic. And then her trunk show on Sunday was the Lazy Cat uh, yarn. Now she does a lot of silks and silk blends and they are scrumptious. Oh, they are so soft. Years ago I treated myself to one that I ended up crocheting sleeves on um, to a sweater with that because as we know when you're crocheting the yarn doesn't go as far as when you're knitting 
one of the reasons I wanted to switch over to knitting to some for some of it. But that was back before I could I had even learned to knit. I think I ran into her the first time about seven, eight years ago. And the reds are just talking to me. I don't know what it is right now, but right now red is just everywhere and vibrant reds are really beautiful right now. See, I told you, I'm going back to the red. She has some delicate, delicate lace shawls here. I can't even imagine making those at this point as far as knitting them. Crocheting, I could I could do it. It would take me a while, but I could do it. But oh, the knitting is just beautiful. All the bags. And I think she had some cottons over here or acrylic. And then up here, this is Texas Prairie Fiber Company. She's in Weatherford. And the yarn um, and or wool and alpaca actually comes from Texas. Some of this is natural colors and then some she's dyed. We were given a coupon for the um, popcorn company next door and it was not anything we were expecting as far as we were expecting a little time popcorn shop. This is a candy shop and a popcorn shop and all the sodas, different sodas and there was just so much to choose from and we of course got to try some samples too. Then heading over to Grapevine to On the Lamb Yarn Shop. Heather did a great job with her sign there changing it up from last year to this year. <laughs> and I have another bill signing. Here's some Noro yarns. I got to talking in here, so you, I might be jumbling it around. She also was fairly busy, so I was trying to get around some of the people that were not in my group. <laughs> if you're in my group, I'm sorry you get recorded. Here's some cottons. And just, there's always something new coming in. Those big Noro cakes. This Juniper Moon cotton is just so soft. And such spring colors. Okay, if you go over to On The Lamb's Instagram um, page, she has a video in the middle of the night with one of those purses. So we now think there's a shop ghost. So you need to go over and check out Chad the shop ghost at work. It it was spooky. I mean, the bag hangs in the air. Okay, another um, trunk show she's having here, Beachy Breeze has changed over to Clockwork Fibers. And this is a little bit of her stuff. And then she has sent a full trunk show over that has started, I think, uh, the next day after I've recorded this. So I got to see some of her items, but not all. I'll have to check that out later in the week. These are fluffy, fluffy cottons, and they are so fun to work with and to wear. Got Tippy Tree. You just see different ind um, independent dyers in so many, uh, in each of the shops. Some of the yarns will be um, pretty much the same from shop to shop, but so many are unique to different shops. That Ella Ray Cozy Alpaca is the softest stuff in the world. And even though I can't 
work, um, the, I'm allergic to the lanolin in wool, so I can't work with woolly wool. Watch this. Here goes Sam. <laughs> Told you all I had to do was tell them I was coming, and then they were they were gone. But I can work um, with um, alpaca and with no issues. But woolly wool, oh, I start itching. Cascade Heritage Sock is such a great workhorse yarn. They have such great colors. And right now I'm using, I think, one of them to mix in with a Hank Me Home Tonight. Now this is the Hank Me Home Tonight wall, but we're also going to go see her trunk show, which ended up going for a couple of days. It got carried over, so I was excited I got to see it. And she has a bit of a ghost theme going too. These infinity socks, you end up knitting them so far and then it has a line or break to where you can tell there's a, a difference and it starts back up again. So that way you can actually have matching socks, unlike what I usually have. I usually have cousins or sisters, but those are actually, you can have identical twins. This is all some of the Noros. And the Louisa Harding, which she has on sale right now. And Heather has most of this, if not all, is online. And she does shipping in the United States. I'm telling you, red. I am just into red. Here we are with the Hank Me Home Tonight trunk show. And she did some of these great cups. I came, I crawled, I got the cup. And I ended up getting the cup. <laughs> Not that one, but one that's similar to this. And I... Can you tell from some of the words what has inspired her? I'm betting you can from the next cup that comes up and those colors. Those colors should tell you along with this. She was inspired by Beetlejuice. And it's, this is just such a fun collection of colors. I really like those zebra striped ones. I don't know what it is, but I keep coming back to those. Then she also, um, along with doing some acrylic stitch markers and wood stitch markers, she made some um, holders, and these are in an acrylic. I have not seen the acrylic ones before, only the wooden ones. And I believe, I can't think if that was her show colorway. Uh, here we go with the fibers. I'm going to figure out drop spindling. I swear I am. I can't stop myself from touching these. They're so soft and cuddly. And then we've got the needle wall. Looking all around here. And then this Notions pouch, it just called my name. Isn't it great? I love it. All the minis, hooks. I love the name on this one, Young and Trendy, the Lane to Nord. <laughs> I'm neither of those things. I may wish I was, but I'm neither of those things. And right on top of the acrylic here, I found something else. Can you tell I got distracted? Eco and Hemp by Cascade Yarns. I had not seen this before. I'm trying to turn it over without dropping the camera. Peruvian Highland Wool and Hemp. It was a bit on the scratchy side, but I wonder what it would be like after it had been soaked and made into something. Might have to try it sometime. Okay, down here is the Anthem. These are 100% acrylic. They're nice and soft, and they are um, inexpensive and work great. That's what I made Sam's black sweater with the white stripe that he wore in Alaska. And he's gotten a lot of wear out of that, and it's looking great still, no matter if it's thrown around or whatever. 
Okay, here's some summer socks from the Lane Denord. And this is the cotton socks. I'm curious about some of this too. It's so soft. Oh well, I better get going and I will see you in the next crawl.